where are we right now? So, you know, every day I get updates from our medical professionals, from, from people across the, the community that have gone out and gotten tested, not only with our testing uh, person or personnel, but, but outside in the community. Uh, so every day our number has, has increased and in some cases tripled. And so that's created a sense of urgency for, for me and for the community that, that I hope is, is, is seen and felt. And so the numbers right now, uh, as of last night, uh, is we have 21 people within our military community that have tested positive. Wow. And, and it, it, it doesn't care who you are, what you do, how old you are. So we've got civilians, we've got military, officer, enlisted, we've got contractors, we've got DA civilians, we've got, we've got some, of all, some of the people that work on the garrison team, and we have children. So you know, as of yesterday, we had one of our first children test positive for COVID. The question I get asked often is, how are we going to beat this virus? Because we can't see it. I mean, I, I'm pretty comfortable with, with you know, how to defeat an enemy. Mm -hmm. The problem is, you've got an enemy that you can't see, that you can't catch at a perimeter, because it can come through and, and people can be carrying it and not know that they are infected and not know that they potentially are infecting others. So that's why we use phrases like social distancing. That's why we're standing six feet apart. But the reality is, it's inside the community already. And so we have to figure out how we find the virus. We isolate it, like stop it right where it is, keep people from going to it, keep the individuals that have it from going and giving it to somebody else. And then we have to be deliberate about the, as a community about how we stay far enough away from each other that the way it's transmitted, we don't allow it to continue to grow within our community. So you kill the virus mm -hmm. by isolating it and then implementing measures to protect everybody else. 90% of our effort right now is educating and and people just need to understand what they need to do, how they need to protect themselves, protect their families uh, from, from this virus. And so from a defensive standpoint, the first contact we want to have with people that, that might have the virus and not know is at our gates. Because if you're feeling bad, that's the first indicator. And then the second piece is... We've got several places across the installation that we know we must continue to do business at. Mm -hmm. We've got to be able to get groceries. We've got to be able to, to maintain childcare. We've got a hotel with, with 250 people, 250 families in it. I can't shut down that hotel. Where do, where do those people go? And so as I look at all the things that we must do, and, and the issue is the uncertainty. So, I mean, if day by day, things change, right? I can't tell you what tomorrow holds. So when I look at the things that for our community, 28,000 civilians, family members, service members, all, all flavors, all types. And I've got about 25% of them. A quarter of them live on the installation. Everybody else off the installation lives in, you know, this city of 4.5 million people. And I don't know if the, the grocery store they depend on each day to get groceries is going to be open tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the gas station that they use to get gas to and from work is going to be open tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So what that tells me is those things that are within my control, got to be able to retain them, got to be able to maintain them so that we can sustain not only the people and the units that are inside our installation, but all those that are ours and our team that I want to be able to come in and get things should they not have access outside. And I, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't see that happening tomorrow, Yeah. but I don't know. I mean, given how, how things have accelerated in a week, absolutely. We already started rolling back services. We went from zero test cases, zero positive cases five days ago to 21. And it's been growing in the countries around us 25% at a time. We've got to figure out how to stop that within our community. And then we've got to figure out how to protect our community so that all those things we provide for our community, they've got to, they've got to remain open. If you've had a doctor tell you to self-quarantine or self-isolate, you stay inside your house. You do not come out. You do not open your door. You coordinate with someone to help get you things that you need, groceries, 
toilet paper now that we have it back on the shelves in the commissary, over-the-counter medication. The only reason you come out of quarantine is because you've had a conversation with a doctor and that doctor said, hey, based upon your symptoms, based upon how long you have been away from anybody else, I determined that you are not a threat to others. So that's quarantine, that's isolation. Anybody that's been directed to quarantine, self-quarantine or self-isolate, consider that a direct order. You will not violate that direct order. In my opinion, if you break quarantine, you break isolation, you have just become a threat to our military community. And there are tools at my disposal and at the disposal of the commands that, that are across the installation where you work that we can deal with the violation of that order. But, but absolutely not. If you are quarantined or isolating, stay in your homes. First of all, yesterday, the, the minister president of the state said he does not want to implement some sort of curfew or lockdown on the residents of the state. Of course, that presumes that all of the measures that he's directed that people do, social distancing, self-isolation, self-quarantine, all those things happen. And so as long as people do those things, he's not going to implement some restrictive measures that, that we've seen in other countries. Now, that may change tomorrow. He may drive by a barbecue and see a bunch of kids playing on a playground that he had closed and say, okay, I tried to say we're going to do it with you know, responsibility, with ownership by individuals, and, and that didn't work. So this is what we're doing now. The reality is three-quarters of our community lives out there, and some of them have to come to work every day. And so we're already talking to leadership in the city uh, leadership at the state level, leadership at the local level to figure out, hey, these are mission essential people. They need to travel. And in some cases, it may be as simple as I need to come get groceries. Those are those measures we will figure out how to put in place the ability for people to move. We will never close the gates. Uh, we've heard that phrase before. If you've lived anywhere in Tornado Alley, shelter in place means when the weather gets bad, go get in the bathtub in the middle of your house and hope that that you know, that room with four walls is still standing after the, the storm rolls through, or it's related to an active shooter. And so shelter where you can protect yourself, your friends. And so it, it is a, it is a loaded term. It is a negative term. And the first question I ask is, okay, what does the CDC say shelter in places? Well, it's of course not a great definition coming out from, uh, from the CDC as to what it means, because it means different things for different places. And so the other night, I tried to define what that means for our community. So, first of all, unless you are directed to self-isolate, self-quarantine, the whole hunker down and stay inside may not apply to you. If you have somebody in your family that is you know, compromised, has health issues, maybe it does apply to you. You need to stay home until, until this, the conditions out here change. And so... Like lots of questions. Why aren't we sheltering in place? Well, he here's what shelter in place means for us. These are all the health, public health protection measures that we implement as individuals, as leaders, as a community, in order to isolate and prevent the spread of COVID-19 within our community. I want the fence line that truly doesn't prevent a virus from coming in to be the boundary for the virus. That's only possible with actions by the community. I need our installation to be the shelter, to be that you know, small room with a bathtub that you go and hunker down in as the COVID storm rages around us. And so there's, there's four things that I've been focusing on as it comes to what does shelter in place mean for us. And, and the first one is protect. And so part of that is, hey, a doctor told you to isolate and quarantine. You stay there. That's a direct order. The next piece is wash your hands, stay six feet away, social distancing, self-assess, look left, look right, ask your, your neighbors, ask your coworkers, hey, what can I do should you become self-quarantined, self-isolated? Put all those things that we can do as individuals, as a community to protect ourselves. The next is the mission. Like The mission still goes on. So we have to figure out how we continue to do the things that we are here to do. And that, that means we continue to do childcare. That means we continue to 
know, we have the hotels running. We, we have the food court opening because people that are working and in the hotels need to eat. So the mission, the why we're here, that has to be part of this shelter in place. That's the reason why if you live off the installation but you have a critical function on, that's the reason why you're going to get in your car and come, come here each and every day. Mm -hmm. And then sustain. Like I said, I don't know if the, the grocery store down the street from you is going to remain open. The owner may get sick. There may be interruptions to the supply chain. I don't know what next week looks like. I do know the things that I can control inside the installation. I have got to make sure that we have the ability to provide groceries, to provide gas, to provide over-the-counter medications. So those are things that we must sustain. And then the last piece is integrated. You know, the question was about what happens if the state of Baden-Württemberg does this or that. We can't pretend like we're on our own little island. 78% of the community is out in Stuttgart. Mm -hmm. And so the shelter has to be Stuttgart. So when we are going to shelter in place, that means we have done everything that we can here within our community to ensure that no matter what happens, this is the safe place. This is the sanctuary. This is the safe haven. This is the shelter. The next time we do a, a town hall, a live stream will be on Monday. That one's focused on our kids. It's going to be at the end of the school day. And I want kids in our elementary, middle, and high school to be up on Facebook and asking me questions, things that they are concerned. Because the kids, the next line of defense. I want kids enforcing, Did telling you? mom and dad, hey, you're not six feet from that person. I, the amount of power that comes from kids knowing how to protect us, how to protect themselves from this virus because we have kids that are testing positive.